So Cobalt has a band-aid on his head because he tripped over a root while running in the park. Uh, but it's week six recap of the LSBA. Oh, right, I gotta... So something interesting about this week is that all five battles are either a differential of four, four, or two. Two. And then four. Three fours and two twos. Isn't that fun? Uh, so we're gonna start off with, uh, the Rossi versus David video. Um, and a lot of weird stuff happens in this video. So he leads out, uh, his reign and he leads out his screen setter. Uh, he U-turns so that it doesn't do much damage, but it gives him a slight advantage. And then he throws out his stealth rock, and then he throws out a toxic, because this is a support swamper. Swamper? And then he flip turns, and I assume his fourth attack is earthquake. And he had hidden power grass. Rossi is not afraid to have hidden powers. And I think he wasn't expecting the hidden power grass, he was expecting the will-o'-wisp. Uh... And so he switched into his special attacker, who also had a um, regenerator. And he flip turns into the reflect, baiting the will-o'-wisp to stall out his uh, screens. Hits him with a sludge bomb. Pain splits. The will-o'-wisp missed, and it's... You can't toxic a slow king's uh, galar, and he switches. He's immune to the poison. He switched slow? into it. Really slow. He switches in his resist that's to water. That's what are you saying? Like, like, he didn't want to get hit by a hurricane, so he sends in his quad resist to flying. Oh, everything has hidden power grass. Magnazone and Rodom both had hidden power grass. So, let's see. The weather ball. He could have taken one more weather ball if he had decided to use uh, Thunderbolt twice. Because he doesn't have uh, his ground... Pokemon anymore. He would have. He would have been fine. He could have just thunderbolted twice. It would have KO'd. But he switches in this guy. He doesn't. He's expecting a uh, heavy slam. And um, David was expecting him to switch into Magnazone for the magnet pull. That's why he has Earthquake on it. But now he's trying to Will-O-Wisp. And it's going to miss a second time. No, he's Pain Splitting. He was hoping to Pain Split the Celestial. And the Volt Switch gets the crit and it knocks him out. It's horrible. Sends in the Lopany. Uh, hits him with a Fake Out and takes almost as much damage from uh, the fake out. And I guess he doesn't have psychic like legit on his slow king. He only has future sight. Oh, and he gets the poison on the sludge bomb. Don't for So, here's what happens. He misses two will-o'-wisps. He um uh, gets a crit. <coughs> on the volt switch and he gets the poison on the lopany on the sludge bomb now there are, there's at least three other luck things that happen and although ice beam is slightly more powerful than freeze dry he should have had freeze dry but maybe freeze dry wouldn't have knocked out the uh the Zapdos there, so I don't know. 
And this was probably Scarf um, Kyurem, if I had to guess. And then he's he hits him with the Air Slash. He flinches. Add that to the list. And he was expecting the Magnazone switch again. Uh, but the Heavy Slam is weakened by the Reflect. Hits him with the Earthquake and it doesn't do enough because he's expecting the, uh, the Magnazone. And he uses Thunder Wave. And it misses. He misses two Will-O-Wisps. He misses one Thunder Wave. He gets a crit from the Volt Switch. He gets a Sludge Bomb from... Uh, Poison from the Sludge Bomb. He gets a crit from the Volt Switch. And two Air Slash... Oh, only one Air Slash flinch so far. And he keeps predicting that switch. It's the only thing that really threatens his Celestila. So he's got to spam Earthquake on the off chance that it happens. And he gets a second Air Slash flinch. And... David says, yeah, I've been getting pretty lucky this tournament. Rossi says, I'm so mad. So that was that one. Um, David ends up beating Rossi that term. He's only lost once so far. So let's reset this uh, Taco versus Azoth, Azoth battle. And this one's fun. Uh, Azoth does some cool stuff. Um... He says, Oompa. And he, Taco is brave. He just earthquakes it with his scarf. Yeah, he's got a scarf Garchomp and he earthquakes the nine tails twice, even though he knows it only takes one blizzard or freeze dry to take him out. And they both have screens up. He's got his Aurora Veil, but he doesn't have his Aurora Veil setter anymore. Um, you know, the smart thing to do would have been to switch in Vikavolt, because it's obviously Scarfed, um, and he was locked in the Earthquake. Uh, and he has Levitate. And then he's probably got, like, Hidden Power Ice, or... Honestly, he could have just Thunderbolted, and uh, Taka wouldn't have had any good switch-ins for it. So we send in the Mawile, get the Intimidate, that's the whole goal. Um, hits him with Drain Punch, Drain Punch is kind of neutral. He expects the switch in, because why would you knock off a Burn Orb, a Flame Orb? Um, he was expecting Brick Break, because uh, this Mawile usually has Brick Break. Strength Sap. On the Corviknight that just switched in, heals the Jellicent all the way up. The Will-O-Wisp burns the Klefki, and both screens go down. So, I... Uh, Expecting a Drain Punch, one might switch in Togekiss, because it quad resists fighting. But no. Uh, he's just going for spikes here. Sets up two layers on uh, Azoth's side, which comes in handy later. He only has one floater, so... The uh, Air Slash does way too much on the Vikavolt, but he goes for a Thunderbolt, and I guess he's, uh, Specs. And he has Crunch on his, uh, Scarf, 
Garchomp, just in case of uh, jealousence. Uh, the Air Slash is resisted by Tyrantrum's Rock type. And this is the... The last week. No. The sec... Second to last week, because he trades his Corviknight. And if he had put Body Press on his Corviknight, it might have knocked out the Tyrantrum, but no. He gets hit by the head smash. Luckily, he's got a Scarf gar Garchomp. And he uses Brick Break in case of a Vikavolt switch in. And he's still stuck on it. I mean, if... As I just didn't notice that it was a Scarf <laughs> Garchomp. Because otherwise, why wouldn't you switch in Jealous in into the Brick Break? And he was expecting the... Uh, the Togekiss switch, so he thunderbolt, thunder punched. And now he notices. He's going for Trick Room, because everything is way too fast. Uh, but he has ancient power, uh, hoping for the stat boost. But Camerupt is just too powerful. It's everything with Flamethrow. And Earth Power. He's, uh... He's like uh, a mini... Um... Like a mini Nido King. And look at all the damage those spikes did on everything. Uh, Taco ends up winning against Adha, as the as the, as Zoth, and so here's our third battle. It's Dylan versus Rodney. And there's the boy. I like the boy. That's your favorite. Mm -hmm. Favorite. Yeah. So, Intelon, Intellion is super fast, so he knows that he could probably knock out the Terrakian unless he had a Scarf on. But he usually has a Stealth Rock Setter, so. But he's got Water Absorb and he does some. That's right. He just read this whole black bar. And he does some weird stuff with the Vaporeon. Um, focus energy uh, makes it so that all of their uh, defensive stat boosts don't really count. But his, he's making his Vaporeon um, get some defense boosts anyway. Uh, I think he was trying to heal on the turn he got flinched, but he got an air slash flinch. And of course, they're all crits. I don't know why he switched in his superior and then immediately switched it out. Um, I don't think uh, Halucha needed to... Oh, well, maybe he was stalling out the toxic. I don't know. And I guess this is like a, this is a Scarf Politoed, as we find out, because... Uh, and Ice Beam doesn't do nearly enough there. Hmm. He gets rid of the rain, even though, uh, rain's not really helping his, um, superior all that much. Uh, and this was kind of an interesting choice, like, if you're gonna... Knock it out. Do you use Giga Drain or do you lo use Leaf Storm? But 
He switches in his Excadrill, who I guess is choice band Sand Rush in the sand. And so he switches in his dri his Drizzle um, Politoed to cut his speed in half, um, unless he's tricking us. And it's actually secretly a Scarf Excadrill, and it'll still be fast even in the in the rain. No, that's probably not what happens. But he's like, they both survive their awesome attacks, but the focus blast miss misses. That's how we know that it's a. Um, a scarf set because it doesn't do enough damage to knock out the excadrill and he doesn't switch to scald so he's scarf Wet water? or he was worried about the storm drain switching and oh no oh no that leaf storm needed to hit and he just flexes his accuracy <sighs> See, maybe, uh, maybe Giga Drain might have been the right play there. And then, uh, Cartana has all the coverage. And that he uses a really chance-based attack. If it had hit one more time, Cartana would have been knocked out. And he would have swept with his, uh, Oh, boy. And he doesn't have mock punch on his Terrakian, so Cartana just takes everything out. Um, and that was uh. Joe? Drill for. Drill? One, two. Drill? Yeah, Rodney only ends up using uh, four battle? attacks in total. Good job. And here's the high note. There's the the Purdy Boy battle. And there are commentaries for both of these, so if you don't want to hear mine and you've already watched an hour of this battle, then uh you can go ahead and end the video, but subscribe and all that. And he leads his, uh, his Beedrill. When I saw this, I was like, oh man, that Mega Beedrill is going to tear through all of his team except for Zapdos. If he just gets rid of Zapdos, he wins with just Beedrill. And then, but he, he's not cautious enough with his Beedrill. He, he knows it's gonna get hit by a priority move, and priority is uh, Beedrill's only weakness. But he doesn't want to get his uh, Rodom Heat knocked off, because he has, I don't know, Assault Vest, who knows. And then he knocks off the choice specs on the Greninja, and that's going to make a huge difference. Uh, these guys are both in Smash Bros. And this is apparently the first time Battle Bond has been procced. Oh, and he lets his Beedrill get hit by a... By a U-turn and an Ice Shard. But he needed it for... It would have taken out all... Three of these guys, easy. But he wants his Zarud to be number one on the KOs, so that that affects his thinking sometimes. Uh, he U-turns because he's scarfed, um, and that wasn't expected. He's gonna get a not an overheat. Why wouldn't you overheat? Oh, yeah, it's because. Rabambi can't do anything to a steel type because its stabs are just bug and fairy. And then this was a cool play. He put Defiant on his Empoleon so that as soon as Sticky Web got on, 
he could double its attack. And then he puts agility on it, expecting it to happen. They both have a defiant guy, but Zapdos can't get it from uh, sticky webs. So he, he just overlooked it. Uh, one time, the Zapdos got hit by a defog and got its defiant, so that was cool. Uh, and here he goes, just he waterfalls the Zerka tree that totally needed to happen because it was so powerful. Uh, Jack expects a close combat, so he switches into his ghost type, and. Alex expects some funny business, so he just U-turns, and then there's the flamethrower. He, he has no... There's never a good switch in for Nido King. And he sacks his uh, Rabambi, because he wants his Nido King and his Zapdos. And... So his scarf is just negated, but if he's max speed, he'll probably still be faster than the Zapdos. Uh, but he's not. He's not max speed. He's adamant. And there's the water shuriken. Which is boosted by the battle bond. And... I don't know why he sacks his uh, Empoleon there instead of just instead of Greninja, but whatevs. Oh, he's trying to get the uh, the close combat defense drops so that the water shuriken would do more. So yeah, that's uh, there's two commentaries on this battle. Go ahead and check them out. There's links in the description. Um, if you don't mind, click the subscribe, and if you didn't watch, and, and if you didn't see any, if you missed it, you get to watch it again. So, well, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six episodes for you, and then, well, uh, you, you know that, actually... You get to watch this sometime, some um um one um um does does week seven comes ne come next? Yes, week seven, and then we end on week nine, and it's the playoffs, and then the playoff battle videos will be much much shorter. Well, thanks for watching. Oh my 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 my! I don't know we we are. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it.